Yo, Muzz has won pretty much every solo cash cup on OCE this season, over and over again, repeatedly. There's almost not a single one he hasn't won. So this game right here is a 21 Elim game that he ended up winning. So I basically wanted to jump into it for a while, but I'm not going to do it in a main channel video. So I thought might as well do it here. Now, let's see where he actually ends up starting off. Interestingly enough, like I've seen Muzz drop into a lot of the mythic spots in some of the streams he's played otherwise. Uh, but I seems to be maybe going for a more low-key spot. Maybe looking at some of them kinch stats that I saw. Raccoon, dead off spawn. Super simple. I love the Louis emote. Even nicer as well at the same time. So in this spot only has, I think, like... I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, like, five or six chests. But alone, like, that's absolutely plenty in order to get shields. Get yourself looted up. And then I'm assuming he's probably going to push south down into... What is that place called? I can never remember the name. Snooey. Uh, to go for the mythics there. And I think it's kind of says something that a lot of the best players in the world in solo cash clubs aren't dropping at these like crazy mythic spots. You know, I think if you've watched a few that like, I'm, I know I was just done like a Peterbot video on these and a bunch of people have broken down other really, really good players. And like they are not landing in the most contested spots because it's just there's so much risk uh, in comparison to the reward that you actually get from it. So right off the bat interesting that he's managed to get pretty good loot straight away like this is better loot than i've managed to get through the majority of my drop spots okay i actually clearly do not know this drop spot at all because i didn't know there was the uh what, what are those even called the cases in here too a bunch of ammo that's what like a guaranteed sniper if you want to pick it up blue pump as well bunch of ammo looks good i'm guessing at this point there's a ton of barrels here too I might overlay. I won't because I'm going to be lazy when I when I edit this. This is an extra video. We ain't, we ain't going deep into this. Uh, what loot is actually at this drop spot, but pretty good. And I think the, one of the things about this season is there's a ton of these small little drop spots around the entire map as well. So pretty good. Now, one of the interesting things you may notice in the inventory entry is that he ended up dropping the striker AR for the burst. Now, I'm assuming you can't see the mods in replay mode. So I'm assuming this is like the run and gun one where it has zero recoil and zero bloom. So if you want to actually mod that yourself, you go into the mod bench and you add a laser and you can also add the one that reduces recoil. I can't remember which one that is. Uh, but yeah, of course, now he looted off spawn. This is still just into the first zone. Now he's ended up pushing straight into Snooty. Uh, and I guess now he's going for the mythic. Again, this kind of enhances what I said earlier about the fact that like you do not need to drop at Snooty steps. You don't need to drop at any of these mythics. Just landing close will allow you to push in because these fights end up taking so long regardless and he's been nice and careful i like that too like he's spending his time he's not <laughs> what, what is that bot doing <laughs> yeah the, the players who end up landing here uh i was not ready for that uh the players who land here are taking so long to fight each other and then fight the boss that you can easily rotate in peter griffin ends up taking forever to kill and i like that he ends up focusing on going for some of the weaker what you call them around and just taking his time too he's fully protected he doesn't want to lose any hp Ooh, beautiful piece coming through from us i like again you can see on that uh, end of that fight there how the, the wall was weak and he was just waiting for him just to to make an edit which would allow him to then just run straight through like the, the other player a lot of times is just going to look for an aggressive pump again another player in here Muzz is really good at like playing like a, an extra box away as you see like he's obviously trying to like go for pre-edit plays over the the wall which is super nice something he does really well in almost every fight I've seen. Ooh, okay. Crack big damage. I like the instantly creates a bunch more space. And now again, because he didn't get tagged much by the enemies earlier on, like he was super safe, now he still has the heals left. He still has the minis, still has the big pots that he can actually take his time and try to heal up with as well. And of course, like the medallions have been nerfed a bunch now. So, you know, a lot of people, if you watch my last video, you realize that a lot of people were saying it wasn't worth it to, to use. But absolutely is, as you'll be able to tell. And again, he's actually, even though this is an AI, he's still managing to try and keep himself one tile away from uh, from them at all times. And that's also important there. You see how he ended up get, gaining a little bit more chip damage back in return. So often what will happen when you're defensively box fighting like this is that if you've got low HP, the only way that they're going to stop really aggressively attacking your walls is if you hit them back for damage and that has to slow their aggression down. So there, even though he was like 80 HP, he took a nice little pre-fire. I didn't quite see what the shot was, which allowed him kind of to slow the fight down, get that player to bugger off. And then he basically was able to get back up to 200 HP. He has the mythic pump and now he's fully set up to go for a big W key game. Interesting, he also doesn't want to just W key that player that's next to him. You know, you think he's dropping 21 Elims this game. You think he'd be straight onto it. Again, nice. He's got two boxes. I like the fact that he's stepping deep back into that box. Again, he's always roughly a tile away. He's not just like jumping straight into the box. Again, sitting deep at the back. Nice edits. 
And even though he cranked him for white HP there, he still reset because he knows he has all of this. And the Peace Police 199 is, is picked up. But again, he's sitting deeper back into the boxes. He's not just running straight into people's faces over and over again like you might see some some other like high elim players. I think this is one of the reasons why his fights always end with like such good consistency, right? Like if you're constantly able to beat almost everyone you fight, obviously this is OCE, but if you're constantly able to do that, like you run far too much risk when you run straight into people's boxes. So playing safe like that, super, super key. I'm guessing he's just going to go for the vault. There's another elim coming up here and then may skip for a bit. It is nice that he's been so safe as well, right? Like, even when going for the vault. I don't know how we knew that guy was so weak. I, maybe I just missed a shot there. Because that was obviously the complete opposite of what I just talked about, right? He jumped straight into the box. Potentially, there were, uh, he heard him getting cracked or something. I don't have earphones in, so... Ooh, okay, we can see on the map there's a player in the bush. Hits 7 for damage. So the fact that this guy is camping, just sitting in a, in a bush, probably means he's not that good already. Instantly destroys it to make sure the player can't go back in, which I like. Single pickaxe swing and then switch to his pump. This other player is playing good angles too. Like, despite the fact he was sitting in a bush, he's obviously not bad. Whoa, there's a beautiful. Oh. Yeah, you look back at the fight. He sat this pump out. Now, this this player, at this point, the other player made a good edit. He was sitting on the corner holding a right hand peek, and Muzz maybe wasn't the best editor to try to trade this. He did out damage him, which was good. He holds the wall. He knows he has enough HP. He does a nice peanut butter edit, hidden in case that opponent peeks the right hand again. Shooting the top right in case the opponent does a peanut butter like this. He moves back round to dodge a shot, hits a 94, beautiful resets. Now the opponent's gonna reset the wall, but he actually didn't, so he would have been able to replace it had the opponent not just accidentally shot at himself there and immediately just wipes out the Elim. Full speed, absolutely beautiful fight. Now, had it been a better player, uh, they probably would have ended up placing like a ramp or a cone in their box to prevent like the, the end of that fight there. But just being able to grab walls and edit them so confidently from one tile away is a skill that people definitely have to practice more. Another thing, <clears throat> I'm dying, sorry. Another thing he did there, which is, is actually pretty important, is you see, notice how just created that metal box right next to him there. That's because he's sitting in a bunch of tiles that are not his. And if an, an opponent somehow managed to come up and get, a, get an angle onto him or, or something, uh, then Muzz would have just basically been had no exit from that box at all so whenever you get an elim and if you jump kind of straight into someone's box and none of the edits are yours always make sure you're leaving and creating space like that uh outside sorry for all of these uh combat caches by the way <laughs> replay mode does not like it spraying opponents nearby at, at this point to me it seems like muzz is not looking to w key heavily he does later on obviously but uh, I've seen a lot of his wins and he's not actually the most aggressive player. Like he's not necessarily a guy who's just going to go for 30 bombs every single game, but it seems like now he's been convinced otherwise. Bit server lag. Okay, immediately starts the height play. Nice. I love that. Okay, as soon as he sees he has a problem, like he's got a cone over his head, he's made a, an issue there. The opponent can edit. He instantly gets straight back out. Needs to reload. Takes his time. Now he's seeing, now you see that the other player is trying to run away. Immediate sign, obviously they don't want to fight since they're trying to uh, escape, but it also means chances are they're probably not that good of a player if they're not ready just to go toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, which is a sign that you can continue to key, but it seems like he's just going to go back. He sees the other player lurking. Again, that's the, the beauty there of the uh, burst SMG with the laser attachment that you can just hit for 50 damage while flying from any distance, you know? Like, he's, he's barely even box fighting with the... Uh, lovely stuff. He's barely even box fighting using the pump to start with. Like, when he switched weapon there, he was still using the SMG in case the opponent uh, edited the cone that he had as he'd be able to replace it. Let me uh, let me show you what I mean. Beautiful wall to ensure he doesn't get shot there. Cones so the guy can't go out the top. Interesting to attack this wall, given he's in a couple boxes back. Sees him here. Now notice, he sprays the wall with the SMG, replaces it, but then doesn't switch to his pump after he replaces it, right? The cone's in. Now he switches straight to the SMG. I don't know if he knew he got that cone, but I think he predicted that the opponent would edit the cone inside the box before realizing he had it himself. He knows he needs to reload that one shot, I think, if my ears serve me correctly. No, it doesn't. Take it back. Just wait, it didn't run through the box and shot. Have you ever seen a, an opponent inside of a box who's up close to the wall and they're just spraying over and over again? Chances are they're trying to wait for you to edit so they can either run out or they can wait for you to weaken the wall so you can go through. So you can easily pre-fire players like that exactly as Muzz did there. There we go. I changed it to daytime so it looks a little nicer too. All right, now he's on the hunt. He's on the south side of the zone here. So like if you're W King, obviously this is dead side. There's only 43 players up. And the reality is... 
in these kind of games, like on the south side of the zone, if you're looking to W key, there's not going to be as many players. However, the players you do find will more than likely be way less contested, aka there's not going to be as many players third partying surrounding you. So you can kind of take safer fights around here, which if you're in need of a refresh is, is definitely useful. I do like he shoots every single bush. I died like that in the solo cash cap yesterday. It was quite frustrating. The SMG hitting for 25, not massive, but he's just going straight for the W key with the grapple blade. Nice 40 tag, so that's already a, a bunch on him. Piece number bunch, the exits there, double pickaxe because he sees the ramp between. Bit of server lag, but I think we did ended up doing there was replacing the cone, what I imagine, with the SMG and then just hitting the max bump. Again, see, I noticed as soon as he's finished the fight, he creates this extra box here and this extra space to ensure that he has the edits in case he gets third party. Like, you need to make sure you're safe and you have all the edits and the builds around you once you finish that fight almost instantly. All right, searching for the next player. There is someone in that bush. I don't know if he heard them, but he obviously knows. Now the audio in a bush is completely different, by the way. And my God, that SMG absolutely shreds. 100 damage straight away. Oh yeah, and that right there is kind of the reason why that SMG is so good in comparison to like something like a Striker AR. Like Striker AR is incredibly powerful, but if you're W-King, you notice he was in the air and he was jumping while shooting, moving while shooting, and there's absolutely zero recoil and zero bloom, zero spread. So you have 100% accuracy, and there's almost no weapon that's able to do that. So with a burst, you can shred people for distance while keeping that momentum of moving. Right, he's going for the next player now. Again, he's just weakening the walls before taking one. Jumping while pickaxing repeatedly, like he, he, the amount of damage he did just to the builds there, all in one, with in such minimal time, is so good. Lovely peanut butter Reddit peak. He's weak at every wall. Like the the continual movement in this is what's really impressive, right? Like he's weakened so many of the players' balls. If you're the player inside the box, like there's no time for you to do anything. Nice little trade off for the other player, but because he reset, he allowed him to edit the wall and replace it. Whoa. This other person is doing a good job of of getting damage back. Okay, uh, I will, well, not good enough damage, of course. But yeah, the continual pressuring that he did here on every single wall was so good. Like, it's so difficult to fight against someone like that. Great uh, edit back from Muzz, even though he blocked it with the stair and the rat and the floor a little bit too late. So this wall's weak, which allows him to edit straight away. You know, if, if they've just edited, you always know when they reset it, you can just instantly retake it. Same thing here, right? That opponent just re-edited the wall behind him, which allows him to retake it. Top row edit. But the other opponent expected that, so hits him back. But I like how he backs up, right? Slow movement back up out, which allows him to then get, get a big kind of opening 60 shot. So he has the HP advantage. Now you can, I'm trying to, so he tried to block the side jump there, which was really nice. And then I think he just, yeah, he just went for the prediction on this side. He actually, it seems like he went to replace the wall from that angle, but the opponent just went straight in. So the pre-piece came really nice there. Again, that fight continually pressuring over and over again was was really what put the pressure on the other player. Now, there's a bit of a break here, but he does get another medallion there. Yeah, a bit of a break between the next couple of elims here. However, he does get a medallion. He's also got three med kits, which, again, heal off is, is kind of everything in these, even in the smaller regions. And he has a bunch of extra med, um, med kits there as well. So I don't know if he'll end up taking any of these. I would kind of doubt it. But there's also, obviously, the... I always forget the name of the auto shotgun, but there's the mythic version of it there, which he does not decide to take because he's going for WQ. So this is the player he hit earlier. And it seems like that player's fully run away. So again, this is kind of a sign that that guy tried to third party. He got hit in return. He was in a full metal box and then he ran away. So if he finds that player, the chances are they're not going to be very good. And if you're a pro player like Muzz, like, he's already confident enough to fight anyone on the region, but especially a player like that that's shown that he's kind of scared to fight already. All right, here's the footsteps in here again. Not many people going to third party because of what I said earlier. They're fully on the dead side. He's not pickaxing these walls in case an opponent edits. He's just kind of keeping his distance. Now, there is actually someone in there, but he doesn't notice, which is interesting, too. Again, testing the bushes to see if anyone's near. I like that he's shooting, building, trying to place something in between him, just to make sure that in case that opponent tries to edit down onto him, that there's absolutely no chance they can do that. Now he's on the hunt, so he's moved to the bit more of the north side zone. Again, this is where third parties are going to be way, way more prevalent. Doesn't know if they're sitting peeking through the cone or not, so it's instantly ramping and building. Right, now this opponent's also started to create a bunch more boxes, a bunch more space. So he's taking his time. I do like the top angles he's going for. Now this opponent... Ooh, okay. This is always a tricky situation to fight from. Because if anyone's trying to take your wall and you try to replace it back, like as that opponent has done there, 
That is something that's really difficult to fight against. I would imagine this player he's coming across right now is actually quite good. He's playing some really nice little sneaky angles. Beautiful little, ooh, beautiful little replace back on the little lip that popped up. Now he drops down rather than going through the floor because he knows that that was just weak because he was just editing it again. And this burst absolutely just shreds through the builds. That he's just obviously, again, all those things that have just been placed are edited. That burst does such a good job of getting straight in. That's a, that's going to be a short. Absolutely. Good job putting the predator, the cone slide in. And that guy put up a good fight initially, right? That, and the way he opened that fight was really strong. That he, like, countered the aggression that Muzz had. But again, as soon as you get that chip damage off, like, Muzz does such a good job of continually applying pressure back onto you that it gives you no chance to heal at all. Massive another dink there. Checking if there's a player behind him. This player's boxed up in wood, so, like, they're, they're bad. Immediately. Or they're weak on materials and they're desperate, so... Unfortunately, server lag messed us up there. But again, seems like a similar situation where uh, when Muzz is going to piece up and attack a wall, he just double edits through on the top to give him the control of the top layers and then the walls if he needs to dip out in case that player runs into his face. That seems like that's just kind of the second time now that he's pieced him up. Another player now enters the fray as well. Despite the fact he gets chunked, I like that he's just healing, right? I think he traded damage back there. I didn't quite see that. Now, as you can see in the bottom right in the map, there's a ton of players stuck on the, uh, on the wall. That guy's super weak, so this should be just like the freest elim ever. But again, he does slightly have to be careful here uh, that he doesn't get held by all the players in front of him. So like he's not going to jump into that box, even though that could be a free elim. He's not going to jump straight into the box because he knows ultimately like he could be held and the game could be ending here. And again, you still want to win the game. Like although he's WKing for 21 elims, he still wants to win the game. Now he gets ahead. That player is weak and he just picks up the free elim anyway. OCE, baby. <laughs> but to be honest, like, you know, I'm, I'm joking, OCE, it's top 750 in OCE to qualify to the finals, but if you're in EU, like, top 11,500 still is full with some really bad players. So there'll be players who make mistakes like that and are open and are super free if you if you look out for it. Okay, he saw someone rotating, so that's a good time for him to rotate too, because uh, oftentimes when the first person uses their grapple blade, other players will also start to use them at the same time. And especially because, like, if there's one person flying through the sky, everyone can shoot him. If all of the lobby's moving, there's much less chance of that. Interesting kind of staggers. Looks for a, a fight here. I've seen Muzz often look for fights at kind of uh, this point in the game, but after hitting the max damage, it is just a case of jumping in, right? The the benefit of the... Ooh, nice. Jump straight in, got the ramp. Nice edit. One of the things I was saying, the, the benefit of the, the burst in this situation is... The one single burst it shoots, if the if the player has a cone and a floor that's edited and they're weak, it can break both of them at the same time. Which I think is really interesting. I hadn't really thought about that until watching this. Again. Ooh! I was just about to say, one of the things he does is he always spends his time to make sure um, that he creates his own boxes and his own spaces like he did there, but that one wall miss almost cost him something massive. Again, the... What do you call them? The uh, medallions are doing god's work here i think this is also another point right he has extra materials there i think but even if he didn't have extra materials there this is kind of the situation where you don't want to just just try and oh i'm going to grapple blade to get into this next zone it's like he's intentionally using a bunch of his materials to avoid using the heals that he has to use later it's like you kind of have to figure out do i want to risk losing hp or do i want to risk using the materials i have immediately double protected box up in metal this guy gets sprayed straight away picked up right out and again, he doesn't, doesn't greed for the loot straight away. He waits for them to stop pressuring, which is really nice. Now he's back up to capped metal, but didn't really actually get much uh, from that in terms of mats. I don't think... Oh, there we go. Sorry, he got the wood. He didn't get much of his brick back up. So that player must have not had much brick at all, unfortunately. Uses another big pot. And replays is kind of bugged. As you may have noticed, he'll use that big pot. And it said three, and now there's none of them. So he has no more shields in his inventory. With the max zone still to go. Five med kits. So now he's like set up to win the game. But from here he still does get another uh, like what what did I say? Was it 21 elims? So another seven elims from this point. Nice. Big chip damage onto him. That'll probably be a W key. Yep, single pickaxe pick and then switches to the pump. Super, super nice. Doesn't double pickaxe in case he gets pre-fired back. Or the guy edits on him, of course. Now it seems like that player's away, so he's taking his time. Yep. There's a weak wall there, but he's, is he going to jump into it? No. I was, hope, I was hoping he'd go for a bit of a crazy W key. 
again, just using the wood that he has. At this point, he needs a refresh to win the game. Like, even if he was going to stop WKing from this point, like, the amount of materials that he has is not enough. And even in a game where he isn't heavily WKing, I've often seen mods just try to fight players at this point, right? Like, if a good refresh at this point, going from 74 to, like, uh, almost cap materials, can be enough to win you the game. So, it's a good time to go for it. Anyway, wasn't successful there, so repeatedly covers every angle, right? Like, he's always covering with metal at the minute on that far left-hand side while he's WKing here to avoid being sprayed as much as possible. And then, see? Now when he gets sprayed, he has that full metal to already protect him, which is super useful. Gets the materials uh, again. Unfortunately, this player does not have more brick unless it's just at the back of the box there, which doesn't seem to be, no. So the medallion's doing a lot of work here. Uh, I think, it, let me see, it's three, so it should be up to 165, or 160, sorry, it stops out here. So he does only have two medallions. So he can be one pumped by almost any shotgun. I can't remember what the what the gray or blue damage does maximum. Uh, maybe any can one pump him here. So he does have to be careful while he's fighting. Twenty players left. Fresh builds next to him. Another player lands onto him. Cracked. Like that's an immediate sign you're keying. And again, super careful here. I like the ramp in case he needed a ramp phase into the box. This player's just legged it. Now zones have started to move. And again, super careful. He's always trying to make sure he's covered while keying. You may think this, sometimes it's often to think, mm, this is a bit of a waste of materials for me here. And it can be sometimes, but if you're getting as many elims as muzzes, the investment is so worth it. Again, this is what I talked about earlier, the kind of blueprint edits. He replaces the wall from over the right hand peak, something you have to have practiced. He's, that's two elims out of this. He's done that whilst being completely protected. Nice little elevation straight away. I like that he goes up, players on his wall. Replaces the cone and doesn't tunnel vision it. He's still focusing on the win, of course, right? He is keying, but he's still focusing on how to win. Single layer above him in the cone, so he's looking straight up at height. We're just chilling. Like, he's in a full mailbox, doesn't need to do anything. Again, I like how he walked backwards, straight into the, into the box there to make sure he had, like, good angles. Cracked. Now that's an easy W key. But he doesn't really know where the player is. So he's not going to jump straight in. Again... He can be one pumped here, so he still has to be relatively careful about what he does. Grapple blade to front side. Fully protected again. Another blueprint edit. Doesn't get it. See, so probably will through the server lag. Yeah, absolutely. We love server. I love replay mode. So fun. But again, he's fully stacked up. Didn't get any big pots or anything from that, so he's still on that slightly lowered HP with the med kits to win if he needs to. And there he goes, chunked in the back. Now, this is the problem where he doesn't have any shields, so he immediately creates a bunch of space. That's like three mailboxes he has to fight from here whilst he waits for the medallions to recharge his shield. Medkit goes through, so he it says six medkit to the bomb, but he actually ends up having five right now. More protected. There's another blueprint edit coming through. Just trying to chop that player down. And again, I find it's really easy to get a lot of mini ammo this season, whereas getting like medium ammo is much more difficult. So using, I'll, I'll say again, using the burst SMG is so good. Opponents on a single height. There. Again, spraying through a floor is like the kind of clinical way of trying to look up the high ground team to keep you protected while doing it. That's why a lot of players don't end up putting cones on top of their boxes. Grapple the front. Place, chilling. Again, every single time he's looking... Oh, that's beautiful. Every single time he's looking for a box or looking for a wall here, he's always protecting himself. Like, he's not just doing something dumb and just, like, opening an edit and spraying. He's always creating a box and more peace for himself to, to fight from and also just to avoid him being sprayed. All right, grapple plays back to front. We're up to a top 10 scenario now. Going into the final moving zones. 20 builds, probably not enough right now. Lovely wall. Beautiful elim through the window. Up to 19, two more elims to go. Again, now, at this point, when you're just looking for the win, any elim that he's going for is, is can't be too risky. There you go, the beautiful spray through the wall. That's kind of one of the things that I said earlier, like it, the, this thing breaks walls so easily. So in that kind of scenario where there's a, a wood wall between you, rather than editing in his face with your SMG, just spraying through your own wall is an easy way just to pick up that final damage when you're, when you're looking to kill someone there. Again, it's getting a bit sketchy here. He's not got full control because someone tried to cut him off. Lo lovely cone at the end. Down to a, a 1v1v1. One of the players must be healing in the backside of the storm. He has enough medkits to win it, but I don't think he's... Enough, he should have enough mats as well. But he doesn't know what the player up above has. So by spraying him here, he kind of forces that player up above to play for heal off. Early. 
which means he could die to storm uh, storm sickness before Muzzwood. So had that player then run back into storm, he would be end up uh, starting to heal off earlier. Muzzwood protecting himself. That's one person down to the heal off already. So now it's one v one. He has four med kits, even though it says he has six. So at this point, this should be a free win. The other player I can see in the in the map, obviously then started healing off so much earlier because Muzz started spraying Am. He's got his 21 Elim, so we know he's going to win this without trying to pick up that final Elim to the other player. This is the, the thrilling part of solo cash cups this season. The medkit plays. Wow, what's the other guy doing? Oops. Other guy's still got a medkit or two is left as well. Sorry, I got the wrong button. There we go. But down to one medkit. This guy's also got a medkit left, but Muzz has got the slight HP advantage. So he's going to end up winning that one out. You can tell he's starting to look, because he's thinking, oh my god. Storm Sickness pops up, and he wins instantly there. Basically, he took less storm damage than the other person throughout the zone. I don't think he took a single piece of storm damage that game. Maybe he didn't. Anyway, awesome gameplay from Muzz. Ton you can learn from that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.